All right, everybody, we are live again. Dynasty the Mirror, Search for Huru. And I have the brother Sub-03639 with us on today. And this, uh, this afternoon, the topic is corporate culture from a Black perspective. Now, you know, me being in corporate America, I've heard this term corporate culture um, over and over. It was beaten into my head uh, when I first started uh, in corporate America. Uh, I'm not too fond of it. Uh, the reason why I just felt as if uh, old white men use corporate culture as an excuse to be petty as fuck. That was my experience with uh, corporate culture. Um, for example, I remember one time we had gotten um, donuts for the team, right? And I'm greedy. I love to eat. So I went and I got a donut. Enjoyed the donut. Goddamn ate the fuck out of that donut. And then I remember they called me into the office. And they said, Dinus, uh, you ate the donut before the rest of the team. Is that corporate culture? I'm like, are you fucking serious? Are you really trying to leverage corporate culture over a damn donut? And then all the crazy shit that goes on in office environments, I'm guy, I'm pretty sure you guys are are aware of the drama and the bullshit that goes on um, in office environments in corporate America. But you want to call me in the office and leverage corporate culture over a damn donut but anyways brother sub-zero uh go ahead and take it away no i feel you a thousand percent brother uh you know the corporate environment is uh i will i'm gonna have to be honest i do feel like i i prefer it over the, the traditional blue collar environment the only thing i feel about blue collar jobs is that somebody don't like your ass you don't know because they're gonna cuss you out or They'll mean mug you. A lot of times, those are the people, they tend to be less educated, per se, traditionally educated. And so they'll, you know, a lot of times they'll just let you know how they feel or, you know, and a lot of those jobs, depending on how well they pay, they are hard to replace. Whereas in corporate environment, you tend to have to have a skill set. Like me, I'm an IT developer. So based on the skill set that I have, and the experience and the resume that I built up, I command a certain rate. So it's cool. I mean, I just, I'm not, I would prefer more so being an entrepreneur than I would being a an employee. I don't give a damn if I'm playing in the NBA. I'd rather be the owner than a, a ball player, than LeBron James. That's just my personal, you know, spiel. I feel like we as black people, we always want to, we, we think job more so than we think business and ownership and, and control. But, you know, you see that in that they were able to call you in the office and bitch about a damn donut. Like, I've been in situations where I would do, I'll do an interview. I went on a job interview in Birmingham, aced it, answered all their questions. And that one of the guys that was interviewing me was was 20, 20 years old. He was a white kid, still in still in school, in college, right? So I'm sitting like, okay, he has a job, I don't. But come to find out his older brother was there interviewing me with me. They brought his brother in, which I knew that was a problem, but they brought his brother in, his little bro younger brother. He was able to come in, get the job, and interview people, and I'm teaching him shit on the damn interview. I'm answering questions, and he's asking me stuff, and I'm telling him stuff. He's still in community college at the time, but he's white and privileged. So to me, corporate a lot of times just simply means white. When you wear a suit and tie on an interview, what you're really doing is you're putting on European garb. And, you know, when you go all over the world, you know, any country you go in, you have to speak English to get a job. You know, it's not Mandarin yet. It will be in a couple of more decades. But right now it's, it's uh, you know, it's English. So I think, you know, corporate culture has its, its pitfalls. It has its bonuses in that it pays and is less stressful physically. But 
it also can be very political and you have to kind of watch for the pitfalls as you as you go through it i'm going to give you another example of an experience i had and was called in and given the uh corporate culture uh lecture so i was at uh we were at a site you know i do sell so we were at a customer right and so we just finished presenting you know sometimes in the lobby where they have like the candy in the candy jar and but what was what was fucked up like i was with uh, my manager at the time or he was he was actually a rep but he was training me and he says dinus you want some candy go ahead and get some and so i look at the uh the decision maker who we just presented to the um operations manager or the general manager he's like yeah no problem go ahead and uh go ahead and get some candy so i went i got some pieces of candy ate it and then i got the corporate culture lecture in the um uh, in the car on the way back to the office i just feel as if sometimes the thing i hated, hated about corporate culture is you know they change the rules as they go and make you the bad guy if for some reason and, and, and a lot of these rules are unwritten as well so they change the rules as you go and a lot of the rules are unwritten and you know if you just don't know about the unwritten rules if you didn't get the memo about the unwritten rules you know they come down on you and give you the corporate culture uh lecture what's your what's your thoughts on that sub zero zero put it like this i i've been through the same thing um you have to understand when you're black and male go into a corporate let's say you get a couple of phone calls a day which i do i get one or two phone calls a day because i'm always thinking about business or thinking about something so i'm a call people i called uh secretary of state trying to get compliance documentation for some stuff i'm trying to do i called uh, lynn they called me this is just today you know i had two lenders call me and i had the secretary of state i had to call them that was three phone calls well if you're black you have to watch where you go when you take a phone call Whereas white people can go sit in a room and have a conversation nobody had to say to them. Why? Because quite frankly, we have to understand that we're behind enemy lines. Like like uh, Ice Cube said in the movie uh, High Learning, he was like, look around you. They own this shit, dog. You know, <laughs> he was like, you know, we behind enemy lines. I mean, and it's synonymous with white and European. Hey, hey, real, have quick. To hey real quick. You're uh, yeah. You're, uh, you're, uh, yeah. You're, uh, you're going in and out now. Oh, I was. Can you hear me now? Oh, damn. I see what it is. Hold on one second. I'm trying to get on that Wi Fi. Can you hear me now? All right. So, in a corporate environment, you have to be careful. And because a lot of times, what they call by culture fit, or when they talk about corporate culture, it's really just, you know, you don't make, make white people feel comfortable. You seem threatening. You seem to be too comfortable as a black man. You have to be tense. You have to be, you know, that's just the tightrope that you have to walk to be in the culture. I don't bitch and complain about it as much because I've been in the culture long enough to kind of understand their little quirks and systems. But I don't take it for granted, even though I may get on a project and everybody seems cool. They want you, they watching you. They're very cognizant and aware when they get on the elevator with you, when they talk to you. Uh, I was on a project with a guy who wasn't even white, mind you. He was actually from another, he was probably Asian from some other country. He was probably from the, you know, some Middle Eastern country. And he had no problem flirting with the black women on this project, but he literally couldn't even get on the elevator with me. He he would walk down the hall and turn and stare at the wall not to look me in the face. Now, but I noticed he kept flirting with this one real attractive black woman. He kept trying to get at her. And I was like, she would tell me like, yeah, he's always trying to talk to me. This, and I'm just like, that motherfucker racist, but he damn sure don't mind trying to get at, get at some black women, you know? And so... It's a lot of different rules that you have to follow in corporate America, man. I, I'm not a big proponent 
of black people not owning their own shit. Like, I think that's the problem. I think we don't have enough concentration. So I has I heard somebody say every black person doesn't is not going to be a business owner. That is true. However, we need a higher concentration of black businesses, black ownership. And if not, damn near everybody needs to be you either. If you're not a business owner, you damn sure better be an investor. But you can't you can't do neither. You can't just I'm not going to do either one. You can't do that. All right, let's speak on it. Um, Sister uh, Desiree Jones just um, brought something up. And my company is very big on this as well as far as culture fit. And again, it's one of those things that I want to say so ambiguous because, you know, one person they, they will say is not a culture fit. Then they'll bring somebody else in. And it's like, okay, so this person's a culture fit? And how is this, uh, how is this person not a culture fit? Sub zero. Break down culture fit from your uh, perspective. White, <laughs> white man. We know as black people what it means to be white. We know as black people when somebody says you talk white, it doesn't necessarily mean proper subject and verb agreement. It can also mean that you have white mannerisms and colloquialisms and. The way you talk, if I close my eyes, I couldn't tell based on your voice that you're white or black. So when you say culture fit, a lot of times it's how well you handle yourself on that interview. Do you laugh at their jokes? Um, you know, do you find what they think is funny? Like a white comedian, if you look at comedy, for example, there's a big difference between what black people find funny and what white people find funny. <laughs> I think where we fall up, what we fall off is when we try to ignore those differences and try to say, okay, I'm American or on this, on that. Certain black women I find fit into corporate environments way easier than black men do. We're not built that way. We're not. A lot of times they crack these stupid ass jokes and I have to sit there and smile like it's funny and I really like that shit ain't funny you know but that's part of the culture you know what's what do you find funny what do you what um you know when you go on an interview you want to act like you have this you're at the same point in life that they are which usually when you go on it like me when i go on a tech interview you need to be you know married with kids mortgage house dog white picket fence that's the ideal culture fit person that they think that fits into that environment you can't be from any other walk of life or have any other mindset. That's how they think. That's how, and, they, and you notice these guys are like this in their in their late 20s. I work with people. I've seen people like 23, 24 years old, married. They got a, a newborn child. They, you know, whereas black people, we don't get married that early. We don't. We get married in our 30s. You know, some people in their 40s and some, some of us not at all. So a lot of us, there's a lot of things we don't have in common, but see, as you go up the corporate ladder financially, you will find that more people are married, more people are, you know, they just tend to be that way. So culture has a lot to do with how well you can identify these changes to be able to adapt and go in. And I know it sounds real fucked up, but you have to put these people at ease and disarm these people in order to get these jobs. You can't tell them, yeah, man, I like to go to strip clubs. I don't have no kids. You know, um, they, don't, they can't relate to that, you know. Are you familiar with, uh, uh, what's the brother's name, Reginald uh, Lewis? Which one? Uh, he's the, uh, uh, he's the, uh, tell me if you can meet your phone. If you can meet your phone. Oh, you mean from uh, Beatrice? Yes, yes. Yes, 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 have yes. All the fun. Yeah. Correct. So obviously, you know, he wrote the book, Why Do White Guys Have All the Fun? So there has to be a double standard when it comes to culture, culture, corporate culture. Um, when it comes to do you think there's a double standard when it comes to corporate culture and it has to do with white people versus black people in corporate America? I think white people set the tone. For what's acceptable in corporate culture because they own 90 percent they own 90 percent of the businesses 
it's it i mean we had sweet look i hate to say this but right now where i'm at now right <clears throat> i expect the person to walk outside this shopping center if somebody say hey that's the owner we all expect to see a white man when somebody talks about anything any anything in corporate america is white mostly white male dominated females white females can't bitch either because a, mo a lot of those are married to to white men so when i see a white female in a corporate environment her husband probably works in some other company they both or he has his own company but i just think that i mean when he wrote that book you know because he he was a guy went to virginia state and then he jumped into harvard talked his way in he was a c student he talked his way in i, I love that book that book is actually on my damn um right now i got that book sitting right in my house man i've been reading i read it to my son sometimes he's only two but i read him different chapters just to i want him to understand i want him to look up to people like that but he had the gift of gab if you're going to be black and you're going to get in corporate america there are certain things and traits that you need to obtain to be able to get into that environment you can always talk about you know racism white supremacy this and that <clears throat> but like right now, I have a class. I'm training people. I have my website up. If you want to email me, um, I'm a, you know I, I can't give you the URL because it's a long URL and I just got it a few minutes ago. But basically, I'm I'm training people to come into IT. You know, you can make thirty, forty, fifty dollars an hour doing what I do, and I'm training brothers how to do that. But the thing is, once you do that, I tell them, hey, I can't guarantee you a job because. The only way you can get a job, and I know you can get a job, is how well you handle those quote unquote soft skills of how how you speak, how you handle yourself. You know, when you call me, you got this thick Alabama. I'm from Alabama, I know I'm country, right? But if you got this real thick southern accent, you're going to have to slow down, enunciate your words, articulate everything you're saying, and make sure that people get where you're coming from. If not, what's gonna happen? is it's going to be rather difficult for you to really enter into this environment but it can still be done but i try to train people on all that not just the actual hard skills of coding and and business intelligence and creating reports and e etl packages so 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 what you, you know so how should black people I would say treat corporate America. Like how should, what should be their expectations when it comes to corporate America? To me, corporate America is a means to an end. What I mean is, look, I got, my rate is like $65 an hour, $70, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't look at that as I've made it. Like if you read like the book you just mentioned, Reginald Lewis was making six figures as an attorney. And he's like, man, I haven't made it yet. I haven't, I have not arrived. You know, this was right when he was about to get in to start doing his deals and stuff and his food distrib distribution deals and stuff. The thing is, man, like it's a mean, not that, not a hustle, like hustle denotes in the black community, a lack of perfection, just throw some shit together and go out there and make a quick buck. This isn't, Corporate America, I wouldn't look at it as a quick buck because it takes energy, effort, skills, everything. But once you get in, understand that it, it helps you get your... To me, the biggest thing and benefit I see is my tax returns because I don't have to worry about not having enough money to be able to borrow money or if I want to pay my debt off and clear my credit, I can use corporate America to do that. Because they'll pay me enough. They'll pay me seven, eight thousand, ten thousand, whatever dollars a month. I can take that money. I can go and drop that money and pay off my debt. I can pay this. I can save. I can, you know, it just puts me in a position where I can move faster to obtaining my goals. But my goals have nothing to do with corporate America. I don't want to technically, would I climb the corporate ladder? Of course I would. But is that my goal? No, I can care less. Just keep my paycheck coming every Friday. Just keep making that direct deposit and let me stay here for about five or six years, however long it takes me until I have to come in here one day and say, hey, this is my last two weeks because I I own three or four apartment complexes in a couple of shopping centers. You know, but until I get to that point, 
if I'm gonna punch a clock, if I'm gonna work, I'll be damned if I go out here and work for ten dollars. That's just me. But I'm trying to find this video. I don't know if you saw, have you seen it? But have you seen the video of the uh, the manager who fired his, the black manager who fired uh, another employee uh, at the job and embarrassed him because he was filling out a job um, uh, uh, application? Application? No, I didn't see that. Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. Let me try to pull it up. Give me one second. The fires and everybody, uh, everybody who's in the chat. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Really, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, you know, we've got the brother Sub Zero on here today. Sub Zero three six three nine, and we're just discussing. You know, the, the the black experience in corporate America. I'm trying to find a video. Give me one second. Um, uh, uh, let me ask you this. Somebody asked in the chat room as I look for this video. How does one go about making, I guess, corporate America Afrocentric? Like, what's the Afrocentric corporate America? Like, what would you call it? Mm. Uh, I just did a video this morning. Well, I didn't do a video. I actually filmed it. Or, you know, I was going to upload it. And I went and did research into the founders of google one of them was sergey sergey brin uh russian-born immigrant uh the other guy the two guys three guys that founded um youtube and what i found when i did the research was that these guys were heavy into mathematics um i went and looked up you know about steve jobs who's actually i think i don't think he's bangladesh but he's from syrian mm -hmm. steve jobs mm -hmm. is syrian or was Syrian and he was a guy who if you want to really make uh corporate America Afrocentric then you need ownership and the way we get ownership is by first we need to take the path that these Indians Asians Pakistanis Indians whatever uh Japanese Chinese whatever they're doing Singapore we need to start making it a part of our culture for our, cause they say the average Asian kid puts in four hours a night in, in studying, right? The average Af you know, African American puts in 30 minutes a day. So if you do the math, literally, like if you stay away from you, you, you're not going to be able to do math at 30 minutes a day. You're going to have to do math hours cause it takes that much, that long to learn. Cause it's, you know, it's just tedious. Well, Asians, because they put in four hours, outperform and they do better and they wind up going like the guy um one of the guys i forgot his name that founded um yahoo not yahoo but uh you uh youtube he went and <clears throat> his dad he was born in germany his mom was german and his dad was uh i think from bangladesh and he went in and he uh he went and majored in math and that was his, he was a mathematics major. Like you have to, this is one of the founders of uh, Google. So this is the type of stuff that makes the difference. Like we're not gonna be able to change the environment until damn it, we sign the front of the checks. And in order to sign the front of the checks, we have to invent. But I've never seen a black Steve Jobs. I've, I'm, I've never seen a black Sergey Brin. I've never seen a black, there are a couple other guys I, I, I found Oh, I've never seen our black counterparts be able to come out and create. Say what you will about Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs literally wrote his code and he created the damn iPod. Then the iPhone, he revolutionized the world. And black people will not in the 21st century be able to do that unless we create and get those and obtain those problem solving skills. We are getting left behind and we refuse to you know we we talk about business ownership but part of that business ownership when it starts talking about owning the corporate environment i'm speaking from a corporate setting can you start a, a trucking company and turn and start working corporate yeah you could but the world is going we we living in the information age this is a technology technologically based economy right now so you're gonna have to learn those skills well the problem with us is when we do 30 minutes a night of studying you're going to run away from math. That's why when black kids go to college, they go into sociology, psychology, criminal justice, bullshit ass degrees that ain't going to pay us no money. Whereas the Asians, they get doctors in electrical engineering, doctorates in 
and you know astrophysics and stuff those are the people those are the people that control that make the most money those are the jobs that pay so you want to change it we got to first start with our culture and valuing education and and, and, not, and quit running behind a damn ball all the damn time because that's one of our biggest problems is any basketball team you know how hard it is you play ball you know how hard it is just to make a division two college team division three just to make a division three basketball team takes a lot of effort a lot of effort you can't most of the time you if you're not born with it you got to bust your ass just to play d3 let alone division one and then you talking about trying to get overseas or trying to make a professional team in any sport, be it football, basketball, baseball, that takes a lot of effort. And I think black people, especially black men, I know we'll put we'll put five, six days a weekend playing basketball, three, four hours a day. I did. But if I had put that time into other stuff, I actually would have got along further in life. All right, everybody, uh, I appreciate the super chat. Uh, we're going to get to your questions after I show play this video real quick. Desiree Jones, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Randall Cherry, um, brother, thank you for the super chat. We'll get to your questions here. Let me just play this video real quick. Now, Sub Zero, this is the video I was talking about. Let me, uh, then I got a, a follow up question with it. Let me go ahead and share the screen real quick. Give me one second. Um, what's this right here? Let me close that out. Okay, let's see your application window. Uh, that right there, bam, share that, present to everyone. All right, let me play this video for you guys real quick. Now, He's lazy, you know, work, work, the lead down there. So you really gonna come in here and bust That's him out like that? Mind your business. Now, why would you come in here and embarrass him like that, though? It don't work for you. Mind your business. It don't matter. Why would you come in here and embarrass him like that? Depending on the application, you put it back. He's lazy, you want to deserve a job. When you get back, you're fired. You're fired. Let him come back to work. You're fired. Make a check up on Friday. You're done. You know, ain't shit. Okay, so let me uh, let me uh, go back to the uh, the screen. So stop sharing. All right, so you saw the video, uh, Sub Zero. People, brother, pe black people who work for corporate America. Now, obviously, if you're in a, a position of management, you have to do your job. I mean, your job is to ensure, I guess, that the company is profitable and that you're acting in the best interest of the company that you work for. But black people in corporate America who take their job too serious like this, how do you deal with them in a, in a I would say, on a corporate uh, setting? Oh, man. Um, you really don't, man. I'm just being honest. That's the thing. You kind of want to steer clear of them as much as humanly possible. If by any chance you do have run-ins with them, you want to be strategic. Um, you want to watch black people that are put in positions harder than you want to watch. Hey, um, hey, um, Zeb Zero, there's a lot of Zeb Zero, there's a lot of back. I it's think you got the volume turned up somewhere. All right, go ahead. Hello, hello. All right, go ahead. All right, go ahead. So, yeah, what I was saying was, like, I got a homeboy. He works at a company. And they put a black guy in charge. And they the, the people at the company were treating the black people wrong, right? So this guy chose... This black guy was put in charge. He chose to go and snitch to the white people about them them basically getting they were getting lawyers together, getting ready to lawyer up because they were being treated unfairly. And so they made the people they came in and, and basically did some things against the people to try to stop them from doing that. But the black guy told this is the that's that's the type of cool shit that you see 
with a lot of niggas that, you know, that get in these positions. Like, we're like this because a lot of times we don't have our money. We don't have any economic infrastructure. So you wind up getting in these environments where, you know, people show their ass nine times out of ten. It's a black person who hasn't had, that grew up probably usually didn't have the money. They grew up poor. They're probably trying to feed and pay the mortgages and do a lot of things for different people. So they feel like I got to show Mr. Charlie that I'm a good, I'm a good man and I'm a, I'm a good guy and I'm not the guy to be distrusted. So I need to show him that I got his back and that's it. So, you know, and I hate to say that because I know I, it's a lot of people spewing coon, coon this, coon that on the Internet. I get tired of hearing that damn word, but it does fit in certain instances. And this is one of them where a person who will stab a brother in the back on something. Now, I don't know that situation. I don't know what happened, but that was that was embarrassing. Like, first of all, she probably shouldn't have been recording it, but, you know. Is there like an unwritten rule or code that black people uh, should have on at corporate America when you have other, uh, I would say, black uh, co-workers? I, I, I do. I do. I always, whenever I'm in a corporate environment and, I, and I'm working with a black person, especially as they, if they're in a high up position, I do my best to go that extra mile to make them look good. Reason being, I don't want them, I don't want it being said, because I'm sorry, when you in corporate America, when you in any job, whenever you walk out your door, whether you want to or not, it's unfair. Unlike white people, you represent your whole damn race, whether you want to or not. Every time a black person does anything, you are looked at as the individual that, you know, either has something to do with that or that's you or you can relate to it. Whereas with a white person, they can have a crack addict, junkie cousin living in Appalachian region of the country. And then they can have, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, a corporate, you know, in a corporate entity, corporate environment. So. And no, everybody, and both of those are, are looked at as white. Corporate means white to me. So I think that's something that we can't get away from. So I think you have to, as a black person, you guys got to stay. It's almost understood. When I see a brother in a corporate environment, you know how brothers just, just you know, put their head up real quick when they're trying to speak to each other? Like, that's how we speak. Like, I know you, I, I, I feel you. We ain't even got to talk. It's understood. You're a black man in corporate America especially in IT, where there's not that many of us in this industry. And it's like a little quick, it's a, it's a hidden rule that a lot of people don't know that you know, these people are making 120, 100, and, you know, a lot of them. And you'd be surprised. That's why when I hear somebody, I was watching a video and a guy was talking about the, to be a 1% earner and a, a 5%, top 10%, top 5%. All you got to do is make $90,000 a year. I mean, you know, or under, I think a little over that, a little under that. But, you know, when you get top 1%, 280, but it doesn't take much to get up there. It really doesn't. You just, it's a lot of black people are earning that kind of money. We just don't know about it. So that's the thing. Like, you know, making $60,000 a year is nothing in corporate America if you are working in the right environment. So when you're paying that kind of money, you put a black person in charge and give a black person anything north of $40,000, they're going to be loyal as hell. Because, you know, I, I'm from Montgomery. They had a, a the Hyundai plant put out that they wanted to hire 800 jobs. They got 22,000 applicants. 22,000. So, you know, jobs are scarce for a lot of black people, and they're going to be loyal. So, I, you know, if I can help somebody black, I will. So, and here's here's another question because I've ran into this several times. Uh, Sub Zero, uh, how, how do you deal with, I guess, any type of upper management that's black, that they're timid because they feel as if they're gonna get ju judged differently from their uh, white um, counterparts, and that they have to perform, I guess, to a, a higher level because you know they'll be the first to go 
if they don't perform to, to a, a specific lot, a specific level, unlike their white counterpart, like they're held to a different standard. Standard. Let me say this: man. You, you're never going to be able to work comfortably in any setting unless you own that shit. Let's just let's just go ahead and put that out there. You're not gonna go to corporate America and get in any environment where you're gonna be 100 percent like you at home with your family, chilling at, at the house. That's not how it works. So you might want to get that out your head. You shouldn't expect that. The only way you can get like that is when you sign the front of the checks. Like I work for this company. These people started it. When I see them, they are the owners. They are the founders of the company. Like they, they have monthly meetings. We all sit in the room, all the coders. And now they're paying all us all this money. So what you think they make? You know what I'm saying? It's like 40, 50 different coders and different people. All these people probably making 90 or more, right? And all of them sitting in there. So they looking, you know, and I'm thinking, damn, they probably making, you know, I know what they're making. I'm not, not going to put it out there, but they're making, they making hell of money, like in the double digit millions. That's what they're making, right? They comfortable in the motherfucker. They be wearing shorts, flip flaps. The damn boss be coming in there with a damn t shirt on with some damn basketball shorts on and some tennis shoes he don't give it he came in there with his dog one day like it's his shit see what i'm saying black people you're never going to get that type of freedom or a luxury and we shouldn't be looking for it you should be uncomfortable because you don't own it and until you get to the point where you own your own shit until you get to the point where you sign the front of the checks you're not going to get that so yeah when you see another black man and He's uncomfortable. He's scared to do what's right in the company because he don't want nobody on his ass. That's it. I mean, I look, I, I work, I got a job, right? But I got shit going on the side that I know I'm building for my own, for myself. If you don't do that, if you're not building for yourself, if you're not putting yourself out there, then you're playing. You're not serious. You see what I'm saying? You got to put yourself ahead of the game. Put yourself in front of the you know like i think is uh robert kiyosaki talked about um businesses are started and built on your kitchen table you know i can go to work and go to a corporate environment if i know i'm about to flip a house and make fifty thousand dollars next month i could take a whole lot of bullshit then i could go to work and y'all could be saying little thing like yep yep you ain't mad no nah, man i'm cool why because i got something going i won't i don't tell people you know you got to keep your mouth shut I don't run my mouth and tell people what I have, but when it comes down to it, do I go in the corporate environment expecting to live comfortably and sustain and raise my children? No. Now, if you, you can you do that? Yeah, you can. But I'm sorry. We as black people, we got to break free from this employee mindset. We need to take the mindset of that of an owner. That's just me. All right, let me uh, let me get to these super uh, chat questions. Randall Cherry, uh, corporate culture is very important. Folks with less skill, with less skill, will easily win and climb the ladder faster if he, or she has the accepted personality. What's this? Um, you know, play the game. I mean, what are your thoughts on playing the game in corporate America, Sub Zero? And, 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 and Sub Zero, playing the game. Hey, sorry, playing the game. You broke up for a second. Say that again. Corporate culture is very important. Folks with less skill will easily win and climb the ladder faster if he or she has to accept the personality. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, playing the game? Uh, and, and really, to, to add another layer to it, um, playing the game where you don't, I guess, compromise yourself as a human being. <laughs> you know, because some people just play the game too much where they, you know, compromise themselves. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Where they, where they, where, where they have no dignity. You know, I mean, it's like, dude, where's your dignity? You're playing the game now to the point now where you just lost all sense of dignity. What's, what's your thoughts on playing the game in corporate America? I'm, I'm gonna put it like this, man. And this is, a, I love this question because I probably, I'm probably on the outside of a lot of people. Not because I'm pro cooning. I'm not. I'm not for, you know, you wearing a damn eight suit looking like an ape eating bananas in a cage for a million dollars. Fuck that. Some things, all money ain't good money. I do agree with that, right? However, if, if, if I had a fro, right, 
And somebody told me, hey, man, you can get this job paying you, you know, $160,000, but you got to cut your fro off. I'm cutting my damn fro off. If somebody says, hey, you can get, you can get, uh, you know, you can get this or that if you wear a suit, if you speak articulately, proper subject and verb agreement, if you do certain things, then you can get to a certain point. See, let me, this is just my mindset. This is how I think, right? There was a book by a guy who was who lived around the Renaissance. His name was uh, Niccolo Machiavelli, right? And he basically his book is about power, but it's called it's about it's called the Prince, right? In that book, he talks about how to obtain power and how to, and so in that book, it's really what Robert Greene patterned his whole Forty Eight Laws of Power from, and so black people strategically strategically need to operate a certain way because strategically you're not in a position of power so it will be foolish for you to come with your guns blazing saying fuck whitey with your dashiki on fuck wearing a suit i'm coming on a job interview with a dashiki on power to the people okay you're not gonna get a job you could you could you could you know look morally i feel you i'm i'm with you if I was in a job setting, because I interview people sometimes, if I'm in a job setting and I see some shit like that, I would be like, damn, the brother stood on what he believed in. They're not going to give you the job. And it wouldn't be my call anyway, but they wouldn't give you the job. If it was my call, the shit wouldn't really bother me. I, it would, I would care if you can answer the questions. But that's not where we live. That's not the country we live in. We're not, we don't own enough shit. We don't. Now, when we, the more stuff we own, the more we can make the rules. But we don't. So when I say, hey, man, you might have to cut your hair, like Colin Kaepernick. Hello? Hello? I think we, uh, and I said, Mike Vick said uh, to cut your hair. Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Go ahead. Tell zero, go ahead. We're good. My, my, to me, I didn't think Mike Vick was cooning. I felt like when Mike Vick said what he said, he said, cut your hair. Why? Because you got old white men choosing who gets a job and who doesn't. Is it fair? No, it ain't fair. But if you want to change that shit, start your own league. If you want to change that shit, get in a position of power and control that shit. You, let me tell you something. It's just like... um. In the movie Black Panther, when Black Panther died, when when to, um, Eric Killmonger died, a lot of brothers was upset, right? I was like, look at it. You want to take the money from your oppressors? Tell them to their face they ain't shit with their own money. That's not that's not how it works. That's not how the rules. Are. That's not how the game is played. You get your own shit. You make your own rules. Nate Parker made got his own money, and you see how he did it. That's what we need to do. Own and control it so you can make it how you want to make it but until then if it's not like that am i saying sell out who you are no am i saying uh compromise your principles and compromise who you are as an individual no that would be foolish but to just say that a person should you know expect to just come out into a corporate environment and not you know speak proper english you want to come in there speaking all country or you want to come in there and you want to uh do certain things that are just foolish and not foolish, but just more so culturally what you feel like they should be, then you, you gotta, first of all, be able to set the tone and make the rules and we don't. So if you, the problem I have with it, black people, you can't have it both ways. If you don't wanna set the tone and the rules and or do the shit that will make it so you can set the rules, you can't then turn around and bitch because somebody else set the rules that are more conducive to their culture. Cause that's how it's gonna work. When the Asians come to power, you might have to wear their clothes. You can from where instead of wearing a suit, you got to show up in a damn Japanese outfit or some shit, saying arigato or whatever. You know, you are gonna have to do that until we get to where we can say throw our fists up and have a fro, and that's cool because we sign the front of the check. We're gonna have to accept it the way it is. Well, let's see here. Let's see what we got here. Um, Desiree Jones says, I think we need to challenge the term diversity in corporate America. Most companies calculate number of minorities, but not individual ethnic backgrounds. Now, uh, when we say minority, white women 
um, are considered uh, a minority. Um, it, it, it should, it, how can I put it? Um, should, should we really calculate number of minorities versus uh, ethnic back backgrounds, individual ethnic back backgrounds? I think that's what she means. No, no, I, I don't think that. I don't, I don't think that white women should count as minorities because that's not how wealth is. I mean, primarily, if you go back to the 60s and look at when they started a lot of these programs, it was specifically named for blacks to give them a hand up. Uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, when he was talking about certain things, he said that, uh, he said that, uh, you know, the dole, the days of the dole are numbered. You know, the days of so it was these these programs and things that were set in place were specifically targeted for black people specifically not for white women not for asians indians anybody that comes over here that wants to say they russian american or anybody you could be white and say you whatever american hyphenate or some and get whatever you want and so that dilutes <laughs> everybody's a minority if you really want to say that even Anglo-Saxons are, are minorities. I mean, so it's kind of, I think that's just a shell game that they play with us. All right, cool. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit that like button. We have 102 people watching, only 51 likes. Please hit the like button as you uh, enter the chat room. Um, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close out Sub-Zero. Uh, let's, well, let's see if we got any more questions, questions in the chat room. I think this is a very... Uh, productive uh, build hope uh, people in the chat room that you guys uh, found value in this um, let me ask you this uh, sub zero or sub zero go ahead and uh, close out anything anything in closing that you want to you would like to share would like to share I, I guess the main thing I want to reiterate like I said is that I'm teaching a class um, teaching people business intelligence TC equal development it's two months uh, 16 classes eight weeks uh, Saturday mornings we do review I only charge $25 a class. Uh, the jobs start at $30 going up to anywhere, you know, $50, $60, $70 an hour. But like I say, you have to take the you have to take it serious and you have to give me at least two months of really studying at least an hour a day, you know, five days a week. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just now finishing my first class. I'm starting my second class on June 18th. Uh, you can email me, I'll send you the link. The email is sub zero three six three nine at Gmail. Uh, and that's about it, man. And, and like I said, until we own and sign the fronts of the checks, I mean, we don't get to make the rules. You know, you can't try to shame and pity people into bending the rules to benefit you. That's not that's not how it works. That's why we never that's why we're losing. Ooh. And uh, Jones uh, Kialo says that uh, they love sub zero from uh, Kenya. But uh, everybody, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you guys subscribe to Sub Zero Three Six Three Nine. Go to this page and subscribe. Uh, also, I know shout out to Doug, everybody. Um, I know Doug put the uh, link to his page uh, in the chat room. Make sure you guys go subscribe. Uh, also, go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, also, go to Africa Personified on those same platforms. Go to Africa Personified Africa. Search for Huru.com, Dynasmere.com, and Amazon.com. Search your name, Dynasmere. Please buy a book. Until next time, everybody, I appreciate you guys for joining us. I will probably be back on um, later on tonight. But till next time, family, Sub-Zero, brother, thank you so much for coming on. Till next time, peace. Thank you.